I'd like you to try something. Can you feel your shirt on your back? Try moving it. Just give it a little rumple. Now can you feel it? This demonstrates something psychologists call habituation. It's one of our brain's greatest tricks. It's incredibly helpful, but it's also a trap. You remember at the beginning of the pandemic, everything felt so urgent and we had really big feelings. And this sense of crisis, many of us felt very alive. Many of us felt a deep sense of fear, a lot of anger, a lot of intensity, a lot of sorrow, but at the same time, a lot of vibrancy. There was a lot of emotional energy. And because our brains are so good at habituating, over time, that just becomes normal. Uh, it's what I don't like about this phrase, the new normal. It's falling back asleep. And this is one of the ways that our brains helps us cope with complexity and challenge. But it's also one of the ways we stop learning. I remember many years ago talking to neuroscientist Antonio Damasio about how we could be in the movie or we could be watching the movie. This is a way that our brains shift perspective. And it's also a way for us to handle this challenge of habituation. When we are watching the movie, we're stepped back from our day-to-day -day lives. We have a different sphere of attention. We're focusing in a different way. But then we can step forward and be in the movie. And we narrow our sphere of attention. And we notice what's happening immediately around us. We feel the shirt on our back. We feel our breath moving in and out. We feel the air on our fingers. We can feel the light in our eyes. We can breathe in. And we can be in this moment. This ability to shift perspective, it's one of the key tools of social emotional learning. When we do perspective taking, we're able to see a situation from multiple points of view. It, it's a form of time travel. We can use our imagination and we can look back and we can see things that used to be. We can see things in the present and we can even imagine things in the future. Perspective taking also lets us look at another person's view and say, imagine what it's like for them. Imagine what it's like for people who are living without a home. Imagine what it's like for people who are dying alone in a hospital. Imagine what it's like for somebody on a small island where there's no virus at all. Imagine what it's like to be 10 years old and not able to see your friends not able to hug your grandmother. We can shift perspective and we can see the world from multiple views. One of the things that I've been practicing in order to maintain this kind of mental agility in this time that seems to be dragging on and on is shifting perspective from the immediate sphere of what I can control, the immediate sphere of what's right around me, which is actually very peaceful. It's very beautiful here. And I feel safe and I'm okay. And then I practice enlarging my sphere, my sphere of concern, my sphere of compassion. And I work on opening my heart to imagine this larger world, to imagine the people in the city down the hill, to imagine the people on another continent, to imagine the dolphins that are swimming somewhere out there. To imagine to places that I've been in the world. To our colleagues who I was talking to this week in Italy and in Dubai and in China and Japan, Latin America and in Africa. And zoom out a little further. And can you see this earth from the moon floating in space, this beautiful marble this is a form of perspective taking. And what I would like to do is learn to open my heart bigger. To be able to feel the safety and stability of where I stand right now. 
but also to be able to feel this largeness of the human experience and the joy and the suffering and the struggles and to be able to shift my perspective and zoom out and see that there is a big story here and I'm part of it and so are you.